Some of us think history is a bunch of dead people and dead dates. Not at all. Because from an African cosmological perspective, we live in the present, the past, and the future in what we call the eternal now. Mm. Everything that has happened, as the great Pan-Africanist master teacher, Dr. John Henry Clark taught us, everything that has ever happened continues to happen. Yeah. There's really no such thing as yesterday. Everything happens in this moment because life takes place in the present. You know what's funny? On November the 11th, I was down in Druryville, Nat Turner Land, where we celebrate the Nat Turner Revolution on August the 21st. And as I stand here, okay, I thought that was John Jackson, but that's my good brother H. Rap Brown. I think that has a photo of John Jackson. H. Rap Brown, still alive, give him a hand, brothers and sisters, fighting in prison. H. Rap Brown. whose intellectual prowess, I would argue, matches that of a Malcolm X, Elijah Malik El Shabazz. H. Rap Brown was a bad man, and he's still alive, still in prison, still fighting. And I know Sister Pan Africa back home in Philadelphia, yeah. and her husband, Baba Raza Khan, they're still leading the fight to free H. Rap Brown. Jamil Eman, Jamil Alami, as he's now known. And to that point, I want to let you know, in case you haven't heard, we lost one of our greatest Black Liberation Army Freedom Fathers just a few days ago. What was my elder's name, y'all? Sekou Odinga, co-founder of the Black Liberation Army Joining Ancestors last week, if not the week before. And I had a chance to meet him in Philadelphia about two months ago, and I thank God I had a chance to meet him in the flesh, because most of my ancestors, I had to meet him in death at the cemeteries. But the reason I bring up Matt Turner is while we were memorializing the great prophet Matt, who I believe to be a prophet from God, no different than the ones you believe in the Bible. Only difference is I know Matt Turner lived. We don't know if the ones you believe in actually live. So while we're down there memorializing Nat Turner, one of the sisters comes up and she says, Dr. Uma, I'm about to give you a history lesson that's going to blow your mind. I'm bringing this up because this is Black History Month. And she did her research on the Universal Liberty University that the Honorable Marcus Garvey's organization, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, purchased in Claremont, Virginia, on Juneteenth, 1926. They purchased this university the same year that Carter G. Woodson began the celebration of Black History. Check this out, because as you all know, I'm a Garveyite. As you all know, I'm a champion for the life and legacy of the prophet Nat Turner, because I was born on the day that the movement began, August the 21st. Same day as the Haitian Revolution, same day as the George Jackson War against mass incarceration, August the 21st. So this sister says, Nat Turner, grandson, was the one who purchased and started the college that Nat Turner's organization, excuse me, that Marcus Garvey's organization will one day purchase. Nat Turner purchased, excuse me, the Honorable Marcus Garvey purchased the college from Nat Turner's ransom. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's so mind-blowing is when y'all come to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy in Delaware later this year for the grand opening, you're going to see a mural that we had done. And it's Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, and right next to Marcus Garvey is Nat Turner. Mm -hmm. And right next to Nat Turner is John Jacques Dessalines who completed the Haitian Revolution. The point that I'm making is I didn't know Marcus Garvey had a connection to Nat Turner. They was just always two of my favorites. <laughs> and now I learned mm -hmm. that one got his school from the other's grandson. This is why black history is so important. 
and black history is an evolving study because we're constantly making new connections and we have to continue to make those connections. Now, before I say anything else, brothers and sisters, feel free to come in family and take a seat. Before I say anything else, we want to take a moment of silence, not only for Sekou Odega, not only for those three Africans right here in Jacksonville, Florida, who were murdered by that 21-year-old Caucasian devil on August the 26th. Not only for all of the police victims of genocide across our community, but for our queen mother, Sharif, Baba Omar's wife, yes. who joined the ancestors just a few days ago. She was a supporter of mine, always had a good word for me, always had a good hug for Dr. Umar. And so my remarks tonight, I want to dedicate to her memory. So I ask everybody to take a moment of silence. Important 
and the consequences are going to have ramifications nationally. If they didn't take a black boy with a disability who did not get the services, did not get the protection, if they didn't take this black boy who should have never been in that school with the worst mental illness you can have, second only to schizophrenia, and it's post-traumatic stress, if they can lock him up like a common criminal, if they can lock a 17-year-old boy with those types of special needs like a common criminal, if they can take a black boy with that type of mental illness and treat him like a common criminal, despite what special ed law says, imagine what they can do to your son. With or without an IED. This case is not about Brendan Dumper. This case is about every black boy, and especially the ones in special education. But it gets worse. Guess what led to the assault on the teacher's assistant? A video game called the Nintendo Switch. Allegedly, the teacher took the Switch, he chased the teacher's aid. Now, I might have been born at night, but I wasn't born last night. Nobody in here is going to convince me that this person took the video game, but he chased this one out of class. That doesn't make any sense. That teacher's assistant Trigger that boy somehow, some way. Where is the video of the classroom? We don't have one. So we don't know what happened in that classroom just prior to her running out and him chasing her out. You know what I would dare argue? Because I know how slow bunnies roll. Especially in public schools. You know too, because you went to public school. That's why you crazy. They pick on our kids. They get them angry, they deliberately trigger them, and that day Brendan Depper said, I'm not having it no more. That's why she got her ass whipped. And I'm not happy that happened to her because she's a woman with children, and no child can say, Mother, get attacked, but you contributed to this situation. And she got a nerve to get on television and say, She don't care, he never gets out of jail. While she raised a hundred thousand dollars on GoFundMe, how convenient! How convenient! She raised a hundred thousand dollars or nearly as much on GoFundMe. Do you know Brendan Devil was taking five different medications at the time this happened? Why hasn't anybody indicted the drug companies for this? Because if you look at the side effects of the drugs that he was taking, nearly every one of them can lead to violent behavior. Every one of the drugs. Why nobody mentioned the drugs? Why was he even on five drugs? Why was he even in that school? Where was his functional behavior assessment? Where was his positive behavior plan? Most of all, where was his one-to-one -one aid? You mean to tell me this child is a special ed with an IEP with post-traumatic stress, standing six foot five, getting 300 pounds, and he don't have a one-to-one -one aid? We're not condoning what he did. What we're saying is he was more of a victim than a white teacher's assistant he assaulted. And I'm going to go a step further, brothers and sisters. Guess what? Why was the Nintendo Switch even brought into the school? The IEP team requested it so it could be used as a reward. Hmm. Did y'all hear what I just said? In other words, this incident would have never happened if the school never asked for his video game to be brought into the damn school in the first place. Can I go a step further? Yes. Guess what his IEP says on According to his mother, Brendan Depper's IEP says, you are never to take video games out of his hand. Hmm. It's in the paperwork. They completely ignored the paperwork and treated that boy like a common criminal and nobody is bringing up the errors of the school district. Nobody is bringing up the mistakes of the IEP team. Nobody is holding the principal of Palm Coast High School responsible for what's about to happen to bring the devil. And you know what's even crazier? Two white students in the same high school saw that their teacher and didn't spend a day in jail. I'm going to say that one more time. In case you think I'm exaggerating. Two white students in the same high school assaulted their teachers and didn't spend a day in jail, but Brendan been locked up since February 21st, 2020. Now, in the interest of transparency, his white mother did reach out to him. I never called her back because I was trust money.
But she knows she did it again. She revealed that she reached out to Benjamin Crump. And Benjamin Crump turned her down. Uh-huh. Big Ben the money chaser. She called Ben Crump, who's based in Tallahassee. She would not help. He would not help. Because Benjamin Crump is only about money. The case ain't bringing no money in, he ain't looking at you. Guess who else she looked out for help? NAACP, they turned her down. Because nobody wants to defend a tall, dark-skinned black boy who put his hands on a privileged white female. So that's why we're going to go back to Brunel when we get a new date, and we want to stand and we want to protest. Because we're not going to let this black boy go down without doing something about it. The reason I can't bring myself to call that white mother, you had this boy since birth. She didn't get him at seven. She didn't get him at 12. She got him as an infant. So how did he develop post-traumatic stress disorder? How did he develop conduct disorder? You had him since the hospital. How did he develop ADHD? Now the autism, that could have been genetic, but that post-traumatic stress ain't genetic. That intermittent explosive disorder, not genetic. What happened in your White House? They messed this black boy up. <laughs> Nobody's talking about that. And I don't know if y'all know, but in your state of Florida, mm. your court system adjudicates more minors as adults than any other state in America. Yeah. Florida is the school to prison pipeline for black boys. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I've been telling you parents, when I talk about special ed in, in educational law, even if your child has an IEP, if their infraction involves weapons, drugs, or serious bodily injury, mm -hmm. the IEP doesn't protect them. Yeah, I need y'all to know this. I don't care how many disabilities your son has, if he comes into school and he threatens to hurt somebody, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to blow his school up, even though he's joking, he might only be five years old. He will be expelled from public school for the rest of his life. And I'm going to tell you, parents, something. You better get in the habit of telling your children to stop making threats inside of these public schools. Thousands of black boys in preschool and primary school are being expelled for making threats they can't even carry through. Six years old, I'm gonna blow the school up. Seven years old, I'm gonna punch you in my face in your face. Eight years old, I'm gonna get my daddy's gun and come back and kill you. So nobody knows he can't do it, but it don't matter. He's black. And he's the enemy. And what a lot of you don't understand, especially black mothers, even though I've been preaching this for 25 years, the white power structure does not differentiate amongst black males when it comes to punishment. Whether your son is 5, 15, 25, or 55, he will be dealt with the same. Amen. White America does not allow a period of adolescence for black boys. Nope. And why is this important, especially for my black mothers? The reason why this is so important is a lot of you black mothers are in the habit of giving your sons multiple times to mess up before they get a punch. You're conditioning your boys to believe that there's always another chance. There are no second chances in the life of these Brendan Depper didn't get a second chance, even though he should have never been in that situation to begin with. So y'all better get serious about the discipline in your house. Because you set yourself up for failure by making them think you can always talk your way out of a punishment. And black men, we got to be held accountable because those of us who are in the community, because a lot of you live in white neighborhoods, you only act black on Kwanzaa and black history. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. When you leave here, half of you go into a white neighborhood. It might be one other Negro family on the block, but that's it. We should be helping these women with these sons. They shouldn't be struggling to raise boys. In our culture, the male children are the responsibility of the men. Not the mothers, the men. But every time we have a conversation about black boy dysfunction, everybody points to the mothers. Nowhere in our culture are women responsible for raising men. Nowhere! 
That's the whole purpose for a rite of passage. Where is ours in Jacksonville? Where is ours in Tampa? Where is ours in Orlando? Where is ours in Brunel and Palm Coast and Fort Lauderdale and Hollywood? If we want to save the black community, it starts with black men taking accountability for black boys, not just the ones your wife gave birth to, but all of them. Because in African culture, children don't belong to families, they belong to communities. Mm -hmm. So whether the father is there or not is irrelevant because the other fathers are there. This is exactly why in African culture, every adult woman is an auntie, every elder is a grandma, every adult man is an uncle. Because it's all for one and one for all. But the problem with the American Negro is we suffer from supreme selfishness. It's the Achilles heel. It don't matter how much you know about African history. It don't matter how much you study. It don't matter how many trips to Africa you've been on. It don't know how many African languages you can speak. It don't matter. At the end of the day, most of us operate on a European paradigm of supreme selfishness. Supreme selfishness. And I'm going to tell you something. Going back to that mass shooting at the Dollar General in Jacksonville, I'm having a hard time believing that that white boy just woke up one morning and decided to drive 90 miles to your neighborhood to start killing black folks. And I find it hard to believe that he took his life after he did it. Did anybody see the corpse? Because they didn't show it on camera. Did any of you see a corpse? How do we know he took his life? How do we know they didn't throw him in the back of the car and drive him on off the way they did Dr. King's kill? You think these mass shootings of black people from Jacksonville to Buffalo, these are not coincidences. This is US military, this is CIA, this is FBI trying to perfect the art of turning a human being into an emotionless killer. They're trying to breed an army of people who will kill at will without no compassion for the victim. That's what this is about. You think it's a coincidence that nearly every mass shooter in recent American history was either a veteran of the armed services or their parents were. Nearly every single one. Why we don't get mass shooters when we got nothing to do with the U.S. military? Why every single mass shooter has a history of the U.S. military or their parents because this ain't nothing but MK Ultra. And my heart goes out to the three Africans who lost their life from that bombing that was done in Jordan. Y'all heard about that? Three young Africans, two sisters and one brother, two brothers and one sister, two sisters and one brother died. Stop sending your children to the military. And the reason our children are going to the military is we don't have no opportunities for them. See, one of the reasons black youth are not loyal to black people is black people don't do much for black youth. Chinese children, it's easy to be loyal. Arabs, it's easy to be loyal. Mexicans, it's easy to be loyal. It's difficult to be loyal when you're black. Because the only thing you can get from your community is a Lucy or a Blunt. That's a body. You ain't get no job from it. You ain't get no scholarship from it. No disrespect to the National Society of Black Engineers, if I'm saying it correctly. But they just gave their annual scholarship to a white boy. Yes, about two weeks ago, the National Society for Black Engineers, National Association for Black Engineers, they gave the annual. This is an organization founded to promote blacks in engineering by giving scholarships to black youth who want to study it, and what do they do? They give a scholarship to a Caucasian. This is what we do. Because we're so in love with white folks. And many of you sitting here right now, you are in love with them too. Yes, you are. You love Caucasians. This is Florida. I know y'all love Caucasians. Girlfriend, I know. Did y'all see what they did to John? 
Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors was running down the street, running nigga ride, and still got convicted. And his lawyer, what did his lawyer say? The lawyer said that they admitted the white girl attacked him. But the white girl didn't become charges press. Hmm. Then he said the reason Jonathan Majors got convicted wasn't because he attacked her, it was because in defending himself from her attack. She ended up with a scratch behind her ear and one of her pins. Did y'all hear that? In other words, he didn't defend himself appropriately. <laughs> this is what y'all get, y'all remember these white girls. And I got nothing against the white female. I ain't got nothing against the white female. But when I look at the fact that most black women will remain unmarried for life, because black men are always looking for something that doesn't look like their mothers. You got to be honest about it. And if you do get one of our sisters, you'll try to find the lightest, brightest queen. And let me say this to my fair skin sisters. Because you're no different than the rest of us. We all African. It's the blood that makes you black, not the amount of pigment. But for my fair skin sisters and my light brown skin sisters, if you know one of these coons is only pursuing you because of your complexion, why are you still messing with his ass? I can feel Dr. Umar, I know my husband only married me because I was light. What you marrying for? Now you got six baby coons in the room. Yes! Stop making children with coons. Stop! I get phone calls every month. Sisters calling me up, Dr. Umar. I'm trying to hang in there for my children, but I'm woke now and he's still asleep. What do I do? Black men calling me up. Dr. Umar, I don't know if I can take it. She raising my kids to be cool. People need a rehab for baby coons, because y'all know. Six years old with a Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas looking on that face. Understand institutions are half the solutions. Y'all have to come together as a community and decide what is the first institution we want to build together. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting on the celebrities. I'm tired of black people waiting on celebrities. They don't belong to us no more. Stop talking about them. I'm proud of Tyler Perry and what he did from living in a car to owning the largest major black film studio in the country, probably in the world. I'm proud of that story. Oprah Winfrey, from rags to riches, the richest woman in North American history. Sean Carter, from selling dope to being a billionaire. I love the stories, but what good are they if you can't do nothing with the money that you have to do? And then Taraji P. Henson said, Oprah underpaid her for color work. First of all, I don't know why we had to remake that shit anyway. <laughs> Okay? We didn't see Hawthorne now! Steady! We didn't need that then, we did not need the remix! A whole movie dedicated to destroying the respect that black girls have for black masculinity. That's the whole purpose of the movie! I remember when Little Mermaid came out last year. I went to go see Little Mermaid. I gotta watch the children's movies because I do a lot of classroom presentations and I got to know what they're consuming or what you let them consume. And I'm watching this damn color purple movie with Holly Bailey, and the whole movie is about her chasing the damn white woman. It's the whole movie. Y'all took y'all boys to see that. And then I remember when Wakanda Forever came out, Black Panther 2. We went to go see that at the Nat Turner two years ago because it came out on November the 11th. So we went for either August the 21st, one or the other. We went to the movies, right? By Nat Turner, I'm watching this. And I'm seeing these damn Latinos beat the hell out of black folks. Did you see Black Panther too? They kicked our asses off of the movie. Even killed the Queen Mother, Angela Bassett. And after they killed Angela Bassett, her daughter Zuri, Looked like she was getting 
Soft. Over the, what was he, Mexican, Arab? I don't know what they were. The, the yeah. swimming water beat. I don't know if it was Arabs or Mexicans. She had like she would make love to him. He just killed your damn mother. What's going on? Listen, when our children saw Black Panther 1, they was Black Panther 1 was strong. Even though the messages were horrible. Because I don't know how in the hell CIA agent Ross in Black Panther 1 is a hero in the movie. When the CIA killed every major leader we had. So how are they a hero? So I know that this was nothing but the US government pushing a propaganda. See, Killmonger was the metaphorical woke black man in America, but he doesn't respect African culture. So the message to Africa is if you let these woke Negroes from America, like Dr. Umar, come to Africa, they sound like they're black, but they still Caucasian at home. And they want to disrespect and tear up your traditional history. Because y'all do know I was Killmonger, y'all do know. I want you to watch Black Panther 1 again. Listen to everything Killmonger says out of his mouth. It's nothing but Dr. Umar Samuels. Go watch the movie again. They took me and turned me into that. And then, Shachala was the bougie, conservative, uppity African leader who don't want nothing to do with the diaspora. This is what they gave our children. So you got to pick. Are you going to be a woke black American and go to Africa and tear everything down? Or are you going to be a bougie African leader who don't like black folks? And this is the two heroes they gave us. In other words, Black Panther 1 was an anti-pan African. It's a movie! It's the first movie in the world that every black child on earth probably saw. And look at the messages that they got. And you know what's so interesting? Black women about Black Panther 1, you didn't see no intimacy between husband and wife. Not love making scenes. I'm talking intimacy. Black family was not represented in Black Man. How do you have a movie about African culture? If there's no family, you never saw a single mother with a child in Black Panther 1. You want to know why you didn't see a single mother with a child in Black Panther 1? Because the agenda is LGBTQ transgender. So they wanted to make sure they didn't push black on black heterosexual love. See, there's an agenda in this country and across this world to destroy black on black heterosexual love. And the white man can bully you into letting your child question their gender identity. Your kids are coming home because they're being taught by LGBTQ teachers. Now let me be clear. I'm not interested in harming nobody. But I disagree with the lifestyle because it's nothing but genocide for us. That's the reason they push it. I got parents texting me pictures of transgender teachers. Yes. Y'all know our kids got transgender teachers. They also have cross-dressing teachers. Every type of sexual identity you can think of is being represented in your child's public and private school. But you can't have too much of a problem with it because I ain't seen no new independent black schools in Jacksonville yet. See how this works? See how this works? We don't like it, but we don't do nothing about it. See how it works? And what I need you Negroes to understand, like I told you when I first came to Jacksonville many years ago, the agenda was not to turn your son gay. Because your son becoming a homosexual does not stop reproduction. A gay black man can still have sex and make a baby. A lesbian black woman can still have sex and make a baby. So the goal was always trans children. Because when you take your son to California, because California allows sexual reassignment surgery for underage children. So when you take your child to California to get the sexual reassignment surgery at 12, 11, and 13, and they take your son's testicles away, when your son grows up to be 30 years old and he decides, I want to be a man now, guess what? He can't have no children. Because nobody's telling you on the news that when you undergo sexual reassignment surgery, they remove your ability to reproduce. This is genocide. When your daughter undergoes sexual reassignment surgery, they take her ovaries out. She's not ovulating no more. So even when she wakes up, she won't be able to have children. See, Zaire Wade, not Zaya, Zaire, Dwayne Wade's son. What is Dwayne going to do when that boy gets to be about 30 
and realizes this is not something I should have ever been allowed to do. I want to go back to being a man until he finds out it took your testicles away. Ain't no children coming. I mean, they can turn you back because you never left anyone, but you're not going to be able to reproduce. Here's my question for us as African people in America. For a hundred years, we were hung from trees and castrated. Castrated! Seven blacks a week for a hundred years, castrated! And now we let our children self-sterilize themselves? And the federal government tells you, if you tell them they can't, they're child abuse. Hmm. So now they're taking children from parents who don't allow them to start questioning who they were. Now some of y'all are going to say, what difference does it make, Dr. Umar? That's what they're going to do with their life. No. What's the problem? You no. know what the problem is? For those of us who are interested in the survival and success of African people, we cannot accept it. See, for those of you who operate from a platform of supreme selfishness, for you, it's all right. Because you don't care about nobody but you and your family any day. But for those of us who are concerned about the destiny of black people, we got a real big problem. Why is Joe Biden send Kamala Harris to Africa to bully African countries into accepting homosexual marriage? Why do you care about what they do in Africa for? You know why? They need a gay black president on African soil. If they can get, and they prefer a transgender, if they can get one transgender president in Africa, they can push the genocide over there. Oh, yes! Listen, y'all, we had four great periods in our history in America. Four of them for these 400 years. Our first, our first century was a struggle for our humanity. Before we could fight to be free, we had to prove we were human beings. Y'all remember that? Because see, a lot of y'all like to say silly things like, slavery didn't run away before the white man, you're right. <coughs> but not chattel slavery. That is a uniquely Arab Caucasian invention. Yes, we had slavery in Africa, but the slaves had rights. They could sue for their freedom, and they could never be slaves perpetually. The white man's slavery was perpetual. I don't only own you, I own you. I own your son, your daughter, and when your daughter gets pregnant, I own the baby and her, and when that baby have a baby, I own them, and when I die, I will pass ownership of your family to my grandson. That has no precedent in African culture. Find it! You damn YouTubians, find the evidence. Y'all get on YouTube and see some old goofy shit in your rock man. Where the proof at? There was homosexuality in Africa. Show me one before the white man got there. Anybody found me a homosexual yet? Well, that check suit was gay. No, she wasn't. This is she grew as a pharaoh. Didn't make her lesbian. Prove it. Harry Tuck. Shut up! <laughs> Think it's a coincidence that Bill Gates is buying up all the agrable farmland now? You think that's a coincidence? Bill Gates is a computer scientist, Florida. Why is a computer scientist buying up all the agrable farmland in this country? Because they figured out black people are not stupid. They're not going to take that COVID shot no more. Okay? Well, some of y'all, cool, you still want to get it. You, you love white folks! <laughs> but black folks ain't been taking a COVID shot. So Bill Gates says, since black folks want to be healthy, we're going to grow the fruits and vegetables. And we're going to take them with all these diseases that we have. And we're going to kill them off while they think they can help them. Do you know that there's already countries around the world? There's countries that have already banned Bill Gates' fruit and vegetables before they even get sent over. They said Bill Gates cannot bring his fruit and vegetable into, and this is why when y'all go shopping for fruits and vegetables. You see, y'all in Florida, y'all should have your own gardens. Y'all got good weather there. Hey, it's no excuse for that. Because what you're not paying attention to is most black people in America are living in food deserts. Did you know that? Most of us are miles away from healthy food. 
And even those of you who are not miles away from healthy food, who have been selling it, don't look like you. So if non-Africans decided to stop selling Africans food, what would happen to us? We are completely dependent on non-black people to feed our damn children. Y'all should have a community garden that provides all the fruits and vegetables for our children. What are we waiting for? Love the white man so much, you think you want to fix your problems for you. And then you pray to God and wonder why you don't get those damn answers. How God going to answer you when you pray into a Caucasian? It don't matter, Dr. Umar. We all the same. If we all the same, Jacksonville, Florida. If we all the same, Daytona Beach. Why is it when they found the skeleton buried under the earth? If we all the same, you coons, how do you know it's a black person, not a white person, if we all the same? Because we ain't all the same. We're quite different. Your organs are quite different. And that's the reason why they snatching up black girls right now, selling their organs on the international market, because we're not all the same. Your organs are the best ones. A big reason why they kidnapping black women is because they want to isolate the mitochondrial DNA gene of the African woman. You're the only woman with the E gene. The original cells of the first woman to walk the earth, white women in power. We got all the damn same. The out here kidnapping our black girls. You know who the number one sex trafficking victim in America right now? Black girls 14 to 17. That's the number one victim. They don't want the white girls. They don't want the Asians, the Arabs, the Latinos. No! They want the African girls. And then one of our daughters for three reasons. Yes, one is sex. Another is ritualistic murders. Another one is for that mitochondrial DNA research. And another one is for organ pharmacy. What's the one thing you need to live that you can't buy at Walmart, a heart, a kidney, a lung, a liver, a spleen? You can't buy those. They working on making them, but they're not there yet. So if I'm worth $2 billion and I need a heart, what you think I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to find me a Negro heart in Jacksonville, and one day you coming out the stop and go, and you get hit in a drive-by. That wasn't no damn drive-by. That was an orchestrated assassination for your audience. A lot of these black-on-black -black crimes are not black-on-black -black crimes. They're white-on-black crimes for organs disguised as black on black, because they know if they make it look black on black, nobody wants to invest in <laughs> Wake up and smell the coffee. And I hope none of you have your driver's license saying you are organ donor. Because that's voluntary assassination. Come kill me, white man. Take my heart. You better not be no damn organ donor. If you want to give your organs to your family, your friends, or other black people, put that in your will. Put that in your will, so if you die, the will says another African can have your heart, your kidney, or your liver, as long as they don't owe you no money, okay? <laughs> but you don't tell the white man, anybody who needs my heart can have it. Anybody who needs my kidney can have it. Anybody who needs my spleen can have it. And this is what your job is like to have. I wish I would. Did you imagine Dr. Khaled that dude Muhammad if he found out a white man had his heart? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Sekou Odinga if he found out a white woman had his kidney? You taking revolutionary organs, giving them to slave masters. Stop that nonsense, brothers and sisters. Stop it. And then you got BlackRock. Have you heard of BlackRock? BlackRock is the uh, real estate white company that's buying up all the real estate in America. Yeah. And guess what they're doing? They're buying up all the homes in America and they're converting them into rental dwellings. Hmm. Why are they converting all the houses that are not occupied into rental dwellings? Because they want to make African people a profitless race. Yeah. And guess what? They're not just doing it in America. I just came from Barbados. I just came from the Bahamas. I just came from Jamaica. I just came from Guadalupe this year. Guess what? They're doing it over there too. Right. You know what they're doing in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, St. Croix? I was just there. You know what they're doing? They have this new program over there where a white person can come from America. If they find a dilapidated property, they can fix it up without the permission of the owner and then build a home there. I'm going to say it again. Y'all didn't hear me. When you go home tonight, I want you to look it up. I was just over there. Your government 
is over there in the islands with our brothers and sisters, colonies, and they passed a bill that says if an American comes in, finds a dilapidated problem, fix it up without the owner's permission, you can charge them for the rehab, and if they can't pay it, you can take the problem. They're trying to make us a landless they race what? Brothers and sisters. What? China is all in the Caribbean buying up. The white man, Russia, and China is all in Africa buying it up. If we not get that, there will be a time where Africans own nothing on earth. And once we get to that, we slaves again. Yep. They're going to wake up and smell coffee. Mm. Black Rock and Bill Gates, you ain't going to own no food and you ain't going to own no land. What's the two things you need to exist in this world? Shelter and food. So they want to colonize both of them. And did you see what they're doing in Chicago and New York with the migrants? They are literally replacing us with the migrants. They're bringing South Americans in, Mexicans in, Chicago and New York, and they're giving them all the resources of black people. They're giving them the food stamps, the shelter, the housing, the jobs. And the state of Illinois just passed a law that said migrants can be police officers. Hmm. I'm going to say it one more time. If you don't believe me, go home and do your research. Right now, in Chicago, you don't have to speak English. You don't have to be a citizen. You don't need a green card. And you can be a police officer in Chicago as a migrant who just got here two weeks ago. And I'm going to tell you something else, Black Florida. Make sure you're keeping your weapons. Because I'm watching this migrant wave. And I believe this white man, because I know how wickedly wise he is. I hope this don't happen, but we gotta be ready. I can see him trying to initiate a civil war between black people and brown people in this country to wipe us up out of here. You know, many of these brown people don't like us. I know a lot of y'all on that multicultural shit, okay? Because that's what it is. You better get over it. Anything that's not white is your friend. You better get over it. They can't stand you. Yeah, we got Puerto Rican Africans who are loyal to the red, black, and green, but most of them are not. We got Dominican Africans who are loyal to the red, black, and green, but most of them are not. We got Cuban Africans who are loyal to the red, black, and green. My great-grandfather was a Cuban immigrant, but most of them are not. The South Americans, they bring it over here. They're not the Afro-South Americans. They're the anti-Afro-South Americans. Why do you think they didn't get nothing to do with the George Floyd protest? You know why the George Floyd protest was a waste of damn time? And you know what's so sad about the George Floyd protest? That was the largest comprehensive protest by blacks since Dr. King's assassination protest. You got nothing. You know why? You made three mistakes during George Floyd. Number one, you multiculturalized the damn march. People, you would not keep non-blacks out the march. And because you would not keep non-blacks out the march, every non-black group was able to redirect the focus of the march. According to the Pew Research Center, you know what the Pew said? The Pew Research Center said only one in five, only one in five protesters was black. During George Floyd. Y'all remember all the white folks flooding in the march? They had a march in Philadelphia. I stood there watching. Most of the protesters was white. And guess what? I think the FBI said most of them. To make sure it never came to nothing that would benefit you. They sent them in! Yeah. Dr. Umar, I think you exaggerated. I do not think the U.S. government sent white folks into the George Floyd protest to dilute the power of black people. You know? Did they not? Did it not come out a few years ago that when Dr. King had the sanitation worker strike in Memphis, in 1968, did it not just come out a couple of years ago that the FBI sent their own protesters into the Dr. King Memphis March to cause a riot? Did it not come out a couple of months ago that they was also putting undercover agents in the Black Lives Matter marches to turn them into riots? What are you talking about? And then you get black people say, well, why they spend so much money on locking black people up? They can spend a third of that to educate us. You don't get the point. This is not about income. This is about extermination. They will spend every dollar in America to get rid of your black ass. And you better wake up and understand this. 
Genocide is extermination of the whole group. It ain't the revolutionary blacks. It ain't the bougie blacks. It's everybody. See, the American dream is not a big house in a car. The American dream is not a PhD in a white girl. The American dream. <laughs> but the American. <laughs> The American dream for white people is a world where they can wake up, walk outside, and see not a single African. That's the American dream. That's the American dream. Go That's the American dream. And they will spend every dollar in order to get there. And I'm so disappointed in us, brothers and sisters. Did you notice how when Joe Biden became president, he gave the transgenders an anti-violence bill. Yeah. And then when the Asian women got hurt in Atlanta, yeah, they, got, they, got Asian. they got, wait, wait a minute now. And don't get me wrong. I had no problem with him looking out for them because what happened to them is wrong. I would have to lose my humanity in order to fight for justice. Right. Stay with me. So I didn't have a problem with him giving justice to the Asian women after the Parliament murders in Atlanta. I didn't have a problem with them stopping the transgenders from getting hurt, even though I don't agree with transgenderism. That's still a human life. And as long as they're alive, they got a chance to correct it with God. But I'm trying to understand how did Asian women get an anti-Asian hate bill after one massacre? Black women that being massacred, raped, beaten, and murdered for 400 years, and we still ain't got no anti-African hate bill in America. $30 billion for Ukraine, $50 billion for Israel. You're giving out resources to other groups. And you know what Joe Biden gave us? He gave us. No. He gave you a Jubal T. Bitnick, nigga! On June 19th, there was a picnic on the White House lawn for June 10th. I couldn't believe y'all moving that man. Everybody who went to the Joe Biden Juneteenth cookout, we they ass with. A damn cookout for Juneteenth. We no damn rings. I can make my own rings. And guess what? They must have done. Because the very next month, your vice president, well, she part time black, and you part time is you, because you don't want to get catch it. Kamala Harris had a cookout to celebrate 50 years of hip hop. No. I'm trying to understand how the gays is getting laws and money. Asians is getting laws and money. Native Americans laws and money. Immigrants laws and money. And you get ribs and chicken. <laughs> Do you realize how disrespectful that was to us? Yes, it is. Yes, and y'all went. Anybody here was at one of those damn cookouts? Don't lie. No. I saw you! <laughs> <laughs> and as we talk about reparations, which I support, Pan Africanism, we gave birth to reparations. I didn't have it before us. We did that. Everybody else jumped on on social media to make a name for themselves. Yep. But don't let reparations distract you from the fact yes. you got other problems that can't wait for no damn check from the White House. Because what the media is doing right now, they're distracting black America with an exclusive conversation on reparations. What about gentrification? Yep. What about the black homelessness rate, which is at the highest rate it's been mm -hmm. since Dr. What about police genocide and mass incarceration? Have you seen the amount of time they get in black people in jail for petty crimes? Yeah. I just seen a clip of a brother who was given about 50 years in prison for stealing something that was worth $100. Yeah. The biggest war that we are ignoring is the criminal injustice war. Same thing with Brendan. You know how many years Brendan can get? He can get 30 years for beating that teacher. 30 years? Why is that a problem? How many of y'all remember A.J. Owens, the black woman in Florida who was shot with a locked metal door by the white snow bunny? Y'all remember that case? A.J. Owens, rest in peace. She went back to the white woman's house to get her child's iPad or sticks. 
and a white woman shot up the lock on the door. Well, guess what? She's in jail too, being held on bond just like Brenda. And guess what's the maximum she can do? 30 years. I'm going to say it again. Brenda Devil punched his teacher's assistant in the head. She's not dead. She ain't losing her organs. She's not disfigured at all. He can get 30 years. The white woman who shot and murdered a single black mother in front of her children with a gun through a locked metal door can get the same amount of time as the black boy who punched the teacher's head. Welcome to Florida. Governor DeSantis. And let me say this, because I know we up in arms about Governor DeSantis saying you can't teach slavery and you can't teach racism, which is wrong, because he said it, it harms the self-esteem of white kids. But y'all been harming the self-esteem of black kids since the beginning of time. Call us monkeys and animals and bones in your nose, but that was okay. But white privilege says white kids should not be made ashamed for how America became green. But here's my point to you all in Florida. If you don't like what Governor DeSantis did, why can't you teach your own children black history right now? Yeah. I don't even know what the problem is, Jacksonville, Florida, because Dr. Carter G. Woodson on this day, 98 years ago, he didn't go to white people and say teach black kids the history. He taught them themselves. So why is it we got all these PhDs in African studies? You got PhDs in African studies from FAMU, PhDs in African studies from all these HBCUs around the country. Temple University in Philly, we started it with a PWI. All these PhDs in African studies, but nobody could volunteer to teach kids who they are. See what's going on? Because Negroes are thirsty for money. They want to be paid. They're not coming to here to volunteer. Because one thing you've got to realize about the black conscious elite, they just as bougie as the niggas in the White House. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Where did Doc Sheik go? Yes! Where the green smoothie is some incense. Yes! <laughs> Talk to me about no conscious bougie. They just as bougie as everybody else. King Tut Suit and Balenciaga Boots! I'm an academic. I work at the university. I don't do the street protests. I'm a researcher. But that's not saying nobody. You can't eat them damn books and them articles you're asking. The papers you got, they don't stop no bullets. Where you want to go? I don't, see, they got that W.E.B. Du Bois mentality. Mm -hmm. That talented tip. I'm too smart to be in the streets. I'm too smart to be protesting against police. I'm not going with Dr. Umar to Brunel, Florida and staying outside for no Brenda Deppa. I'm a scholar! Right. If you ain't read Harold Cruz's Crisis of the Negro Intellectual, make sure you read Harold Cruz's work, The Crisis of the Negro Intellectual. If you ain't read Nathan and Julia Hare, black psychologist, book called Black Anglo-Saxons, make sure you go and get Nathan and Julia Hare, Black Anglo-Saxons. If you ain't read E. Franklin Frazier's Black Bourgeoisie, you make sure you get a copy of E. Franklin Frazier's Black Bourgeoisie. Rumor has it that W.E.B. Du Bois, while he was living in Mount Philadelphia, when he started the Boule, they said W.E.B. Du Bois said the Boule was started to keep the educated black man away from Marcus Hall. That ain't nothing, because I would argue right now in Florida, the black church yeah. is in effect to keep black people out of the freedom struggle. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Now, real quiet. Real <laughs> quiet. Listen, I don't have a problem with your religion. I do not have a problem with your religion. I have a problem with the system around me. Don't confuse church with Jesus. Don't confuse Masjid with Muhammad Ibn Abdullah. We're not talking about what you believe. We're talking about the culture around it, the institution about it, and the people who organize it. Okay. Understand that. And the black church takes too much money from black people. Yes, they do. Do y'all know we get a black church $3 million a Sunday nationally? 
$3 million a Sunday, and our boys ain't got no schools. Our daughters ain't got no schools. $3 million! And you still going to church, the blind and being the damn blind. And the church take too much of your time, you can't get your time out. They want you there for Bible study. They want you there for the men's meet. They want you there for quiet practice. You better keep your black son out the damn quiet. Hmm. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Something about the choir has some kind of a feminizing agent. He came in there, he was masculine as hell. Pants sagging, white beater tattoos. He some two of them Kirk Franklin remixes. <laughs> His ass was Judy the Fruits. Some of them shorts in there, you miss? The shit's over. Mm -hmm. See that? Get his ass out of there. Mm -hmm. He can go to church, but he cannot sing. He might have played the drums. Maybe. Mm -hmm. The drummer boy is still be mastering. I think. No? How are you doing? Brothers and sisters, this year I'm going to be embarking on more organization than I've ever done before. Some of the things I'm going to be doing in 2024, because this is the year of organization, we're going to be having a confidential, private black nurses conference. Black nurses need to get organized. They're the last hire, the first hire. I know some black nurses right now who are being discriminated against. We have to organize black nurses. Guess who else we got to organize? Black teachers. Yes, yes. I don't know why black teachers have been so comfortable subsisting off the National Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers, but black teachers need their own union. Guess who else we going to organize this year? Our black midwives and doulas who give birth. Yes, yes. We're going to come up with a map of midwives and doulas. So when it's time for black women to give birth to your child, you'll be able to call somebody in your neighborhood who can confidently help you birth your child. Because y'all got to stop going to these hospitals. They not only killing the babies, they killing the mothers too. Black women have the highest matricide rate on the birthing table in America. And you've already had the highest infant mortality rate for the past 25 years. So let me ask you a question. Black women have been having babies since the beginning of the time. How is it you get around white people and you can't do it right no more? You dying and your baby dying. Did y'all see what happened in Atlanta? They took the head off the baby. Didn't tell the mother that they took the head off the child two months ago. One thing black women need to do is you need to go back to African culture and take back the cultural way of having them children. When you go in that bush and those two mothers make you sit down like you're about to take a dump, that's how you have a damn baby. You want to lay down with the sexy children. That don't work. That don't work. Gravity is north south. Gravity is not east west. Yeah, they might tilt the table a little bit, but that ain't it. In Africa, you get down. That's how I'm doing things. And y'all keep taking that epidural. Black women stop taking the epidural. The epidural messes with the heart rate. Once they give you two shots, now they want a C-section. You know why? Because the baby heart going crazy. And once they C-section you one time, they want to C-section you every time. Stop with the damn epidural. Go to a birthing center. We want to organize the dudes. Oh, yes. Yes. And all of these conferences are going to be private. So the only way you want to know about it is if you send your contact details to an email address. And I'm going to be coming out with the email addresses the same day I come out with the Africa trip information on February the 14th. So you'll be able to go to my social media or text Dr. Umar, Dr. Umar. I need the email for the nurses. I need the email for the doulas. Also, we're going to be organizing black realtors. 
Because two things we need to do. One thing is we need to have an investigation team to reclaim all the land that was stolen from our ancestors Amen. from the end of slavery until now. We need that damn land back now. We need all that land back. That's number one. And number two, we need our black realtors to come together and choose what abandoned cities in America for sale would be best for Black Wall Street development. Right. I don't know if y'all know this, there's about 20 cities for sale in this country. 20 of them all over. Yes, the whole damn city, everything. Gas station, hospital, police, they abandoned. So if we really want to build Black Wall Street, why don't we keep talking about it? Let's be about it. So we want, that's what we're going to be looking into. All my brothers and sisters who do armed security, militia, we're going to organize the black militias. We're going to have to get on one page because if a war pop out, y'all can't be fighting against each other because that's what's going on right now. The black militias are all sectionalized. The house divided can't stand. We got to organize the black militias. Got to organize the black militias. And I'm going to tell you what else, Jacksonville, Florida. Y'all need to start having disaster preparedness meetings. Mm -hmm. Y'all must start having disaster preparedness meetings because white people are doing it and white people don't have meetings unless they know something. Y'all got to get organized. In other words, in Jacksonville, Florida, if you have a nuclear attack, what buildings are nuclear proof? What buildings, what schools, what churches are storm proof? Which ones are nuclear shelters? If we have to evacuate Jacksonville, where's the high ground? Where's the low ground? If there's a flood, where do we need to get to for the high ground? If we got to vacate out, where do we get to for the low ground? Where is the Jacksonville, Florida emergency food storage for our people? So if they shut down everything and our babies got to eat, where do mothers go to to get their free bag of groceries or two once a week or twice a week? Come on, y'all. Where's the drinkable water going to be? How are we going to purify the water if we don't have no drinkable water? What about first aid? What about women when they on their cycle? Where's all that going to be kept at? Get serious. Get serious or we will be left behind. Come on. You got to get serious. Now, the election is coming up in November. I have absolutely nothing to vote for myself. I don't know what y'all are doing. Because Joe Biden ain't done nothing for black folks. Donald Trump ain't done nothing for black folks. Some black folks say, Dr. Umar, you should vote for Trump. Because even though he don't like us, at least he's not letting the migrants come in and wash us out. I agree with this. Donald Trump act like he won't let the migrants in. Remember when he was president the first term? Did they not still get in here? Was it any different? He just act like he was going to stop. Listen, let me tell y'all why the migrants are here. Number one, the replace you. Joe Biden knew he wasn't going to do nothing for black people this time. That's why when he first got elected, what did Joe Biden say? He said, I want to fast track 8 million immigrants to citizenship. Why is that a priority? Your first term. Because I'm not going to do nothing for black people. I know they're not going to vote for me my second term. So I'm going to get as many immigrants in this country as possible, get them registered to vote, so they can replace black people at the election point. I was in Chicago. You know what they told me in Chicago? They have illegal immigrants already registered to vote. Wow. Yes! The migrants are here to replace you, and part of this is your fault because you Negroes love talking about black and brown people. Every time you get on the damn TV, black and brown, I'm for black and brown. I've never heard brown people mention black. I've never heard brown people mention black. And the reason why most of y'all can't be raised first is because your religions have cooked your brain that you think it is a sin against God to be loyal to black people. When you hear a Negro say, I don't just love black people, I love everybody. That's the same thing as saying, my people curry no special favor with me. Have you ever seen a European Jew say, I don't just care about Jewish people, I care about everybody. Have you ever seen the Asians say, I don't just care about Chinese or Japanese, I care about everybody. We are the only people who will lift up everybody else's struggle and make it equal to ours and then get mad when they steal everything and you get nothing from them. Go to the mayor in Jacksonville and say, what percentage of city contracts that black people get in Jacksonville in 2023? You know what he will say? He will give you the minority number. He will say, we gave minorities 12% of all contracts in Jacksonville, Florida. But you didn't ask them about my 
We ask them about black people. Minority is a word they use to make black people think they're talking about you when they're really talking over you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's our fault because we want to be told about it. Religion stripped black people of their racial consciousness and your racial priorities. You don't have it no more. We're the only people who cannot stick together because religion stripped us of our focus on race and put it on belief systems. Right. Right. I'm telling you. Now, yeah, there's some churches that need being an, an exception, but most churches are not an exception. The best thing happened to white supremacy was the black church. The best thing happened to white supremacy. The best thing happened to white supremacy was the black church. Yeah. And we are not going to fix our situation as long as y'all keep on protecting and defending these churches. Name me a church in Florida that's at the forefront of fighting against miseducation. Name me a church in Florida that's at the forefront of fighting against gentrification and homelessness. Name me a church in Florida that's at the forefront of fighting against police brutality and genocide. Name me a church in Florida that's at the forefront of fighting against economic apartheid. You can't name me one church. I didn't say they come to the meetings. I said it is leading the charge. You can't name one. Because George W. Bush made it a point in 24 years ago when he got elected to start paying black churches to stay out the fight. Stay out the fight. And then the Negro asked me, Dr. Umar, why do you want the black church to do everything? You know why? Because once upon a time, the black church was everything. It was everything. We buried our dead through the church. We got our jobs through the church. We bought our homes through the church. Life insurance through the church. We fought the Ku Klux Klan through the church. We birthed our babies through the church. But you mean to tell me now the black church has more money than it ever had? And we're not supposed to hold you accountable no more? Who came up with that idea, brothers and sisters? Mothers and fathers, make sure you know where your daughters are at all times. They're kidnapping our girls. The government is involved. The police are involved. The judges are involved. Child protective services are involved. You tell your daughter when you leave this house, you're going to give me a list of everywhere you could possibly be. If I call these numbers, I better get you at one. If I decide to do a drive-by, I better get you at one. If I cannot get you with the numbers and the addresses you leave me, you cannot leave this house. Our daughters are being sex trafficked. I'm meeting sex trafficking victims almost every other day. And guess what's the number one risk factor for sex trafficking? Fatherlessness and poor maternal supervision. Black men, the best thing you can do to make sure your daughter doesn't become a victim to the sex traffickers in Florida is be in her damn life. Amen. Sex traffickers tend not to mess with girls who got fathers in their lives. They make the single black girls in the hood. And guess what? The average age of a sex trafficking male is 27, and the average age of a sex trafficking female is 26. They're not old people. They're the young men that your daughters find attractive and just thirsty enough to go ride with. How do you know the boy your daughter dating is not a lookout for a sex trafficker? How do you know your daughter's best friend father not a pedophile? You mean to tell me you never met the parents of the children your children hang with? You never let the parents of the children, your children, hang with. Shame on you. You never took your daughter's friends out for dinner? You never took your son's friends out for dinner? Are you crazy? You better take the children out for dinner so you know who your children hang with, y'all. Right? And guess what? When they interviewed the sex traffickers, guess what they said? They said, why y'all always target black girls? Guess what the sex traffickers said? They're the easiest to get. Let me tell you what they said. They're the easiest to get because all they want is expensive things. Mm. That's what they said. They're the easiest to get. And guess the second reason they target black men. They said, if we get caught, we know we will get the least amount of time for the black men. Y'all better wake up and smell the coffee. You don't think you got a sex trafficking ring? And guess what? The white people use black people to do their hunting for them. You do know since COVID, since COVID, sex trafficking has outpaced drug dealing in the inner city. And you know why? Because number one, it's less risky. Number two, it's more money. 
A black girl on the sex trafficking market is worth a quarter of a million dollars. One. Four of them for the year is worth a million dollars. Way more money than crack. So a lot of the corner boys in our neighborhood who look like us are now selling our daughters and selling something. I hope you know who your girlfriend and your daughter is talking to. And you know social media is the number one recruiting site for sex trafficking. Yeah. And some of y'all got your daughters all on ass out all on Twitter. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And some of y'all can't say nothing about it because you got your ass out on this one. <laughs> you 50 years out. Guys is out. Liberated mama. Liberated daughter. I better cut it out. Because guess what? Once he isolates your daughter and put the fear of God in your daughter, you say, my daughter would tell me if somebody was trying to say it. No, she won't. Because guess what he told her? I'm going to kill your mom. I'm going to kill your father. I'm going to blow your house up. He won't put the fear of God in your daughter. And that's why you have to know your child. And a lot of you are not spending enough time with your children. And black mothers, I need you to work on your relationship with your daughters because we got a serious black mother, black daughter crisis. Yes. Serious black mother, black girl crisis. Got mothers jealous of daughters. Yes. Yes. We got to work on that. As I prepare to wrap this out, as y'all know, we've been working on the school. And I want you all to know that the major renovations on FDMG are all done. In fact, they've been done for a couple months. <laughs>